Hello and welcome to my road trip vlog. Currently we've just passed into the state of New Mexico, uh, therefore turning back time into Mountain Zone. Um, the landscape right now has very recently changed into more bushy desert uh, rather than strict plains of Texas. Not a lot of mountains yet, but it is quite hilly. We've got probably about two more hours until Albuquerque. It is very rocky. Um, I assume that we're starting to hit like the outskirts of the Rocky Mountains. There's really nothing out here. I mean, it's like 10 miles between exits. And on those exits, there's absolutely nothing. So while we're here and driving in the car to Albuquerque, I feel like it's a good time to talk about uh, why we are taking this road trip. This road trip is not exactly uh, for funsies or for kicks. This trip is basically to find a place to live. We wanted to live together. This, this was around February of 2020. We thought that we were gonna live together in Richmond, Virginia. And we went to Richmond and we sort of explored some of the neighborhoods and we just decided that we didn't like it. In that same day, while wandering around Richmond, we just turned to each other and said, we could go anywhere in the country and probably play, pay the same prices. Um, and probably be happier in a better city. This trip has basically been delayed over a year. It's had about a year and a half of planning since February of 2020. Um, and we were supposed to go in uh, summer of 2020 before COVID hit. And then it's just been being pushed back and pushed back and pushed back until here we are in July of 2021. Basically what we're looking for um, in these five cities that we're going to are a place to live, um, but we're really just here to check out the cities, um, if they are livable, if they're safe, how nice they are, if there are things to do. We're gonna be doing some touristy types of things. Like I know we're gonna be taking a day trip to uh, like Santa Fe, but we're mainly looking for a livable city uh, when we go to all five of these places that we're excited to live in that we are excited to live in that um, are hopefully better than uh, Richmond, Virginia. We chose the Southwest because I wanted to see a desert and I thought that it would be a stark contrast between living in the Blue Ridge Mountains and living in the swamps of Savannah, Georgia uh, to going out and living in some place like Albuquerque, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, someplace yeah. out here. I feel like I can do the weather in most of the places that we're going. I could see myself living in Los Angeles, but it seems way too expensive for what we need right now. Yeah, I mean, like these cities, at least from like starting research, looked like they, they had that excitement factor, but we're also on the cheaper side. So Albuquerque is our uh, first city and we're just gonna be wandering around going through this vlog, kind of our thought process, what we like and don't like about the city and does it seem livable? And we kind of want to um, take the people that we know on this journey with us because whenever I tell people that I want to live out west, people always say, why? And I go, I just really want a change. There's not really a lot of reason. Like, I just want a change of scenery. Just a kind of a major change in life, you know?
water tastes like garbage, so we have a bunch of these bottles. Since we were going to be in Albuquerque for more than five days, we decided to get an Airbnb instead of a hotel. The Airbnb has a full kitchen, a full living room. It has everything that we need. So today is our uh, second day in Albuquerque. Yesterday we drove around. We went to the northeast side of the city. We realized that the northeast side of the city is mostly suburban. It is a lot of gated communities. It is uh, not exactly what we're looking for. What we're looking for is more, more like a real city, more like, you know, like a neighborhood, like a neighborhood with like neighborhood spots. And this was very like there's an avenue of a very commercial avenue with things like grocery stores, uh, McDonald's, uh, orthopedics, uh, things like that. And then behind those, uh, in, in basically walled in fortresses are these very large suburbs with all of the curvy roads and the dead ends and the cul-de-sacs and stuff. Did however go more downtown and find like more, more of the city. But the thing is, is that the city is much smaller than the suburbs. There's not really a huge amount of area of the city with like local shops and uh, more like neighborhoods like we want. Yeah, they have, um, like we were traveling on what was like Central Ave, and they had like a lot of kind of like local places, bars, clothing, more, more hip places, but they're also kind of attached to the university. Like it's very close with that. But it seemed kind of like I don't know, more college town type of, type of stuff. Well, we just sort of realized um, in our first day that Albuquerque is a lot smaller than we thought it was. I mean, it's a city of 500,000, but I think a lot of those are in these massive suburbs that are uh, taking up probably half of the city. Um, today we're going to the west side. Hopefully it's more local type of things. So we're going uh, on either side of the Rio Grande um, and looking at neighborhoods around there. The downtown areas of Albuquerque feel a lot like uh, both Savannah and Richmond in the way that they have like a lot of sort of hip stores and areas, uh, but it's really only on like one strip through the center of the city and everything else surrounding that are just these massive, massive suburbs. It feels like the entire city is just houses and some commercial area. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of uh, things to do or unique things to do. So the thing that we're gonna try and do the next couple of days is to find uh, unique areas, unique uh, neighborhoods, and try and figure out what all these 500,000 people are doing in Albuquerque. Hot. So we're here at the Petroglyph National Monument. Basically, we are on a trail in the desert outside of Albuquerque. Rinconada Canyon. Rinconada Canyon. And the whole point of this is that all of these volcanic rocks around us um, have been here for a ton of time and native and uh, Pueblo people uh, have carved designs on a lot of them. And they've been uh, preserved through all of these centuries.
So we went around some more neighborhoods today in Albuquerque. We went on the west side more. The problem with Albuquerque is that there is not, like, there's so many neighborhoods. Not a lot of neighborhoods, just like a lot of people in buildings. Yeah, but like not really a lot of like central neighborhood places. Like it feels like the only real central piece of Albuquerque is the actual center of the city. And whenever you go out to like the different sections of the city, it is just all houses and like strip malls. And there's not really a lot else there. What do people do for fun? Like what do people do. do like literally like even we went to Knob Hill and we like went to a thrift store and we went to a, a like a comic store the, even there it's a big avenue full of a lot of shops a lot of it is for lease a lot of these places are closed and the places that are open really aren't like much and that's the only strip of the entire city that really has anything has anything yeah we're kind of frustrated um with albuquerque i still feel like they're i feel like i'm missing something i feel like there should be something it just kind of feels like like there's a lot of secrets to this town that people are not telling us but at a certain point i don't think there is we've sort of covered most all looking. of the city i mean we have been looking high low through neighborhoods and stuff i mean there is not a lot to this city. It's a bit disappointing, I guess, but I mean... Glad we saw it. I mean, yeah, it's it's sort of nice to visit once, but I don't think it's anywhere for us to live at this point. Hello and good morning. Today we have decided to leave Albuquerque for a day trip to go to Santa Fe. Goodbye. Goodbye, first of all. Um, it felt like a good day to leave Albuquerque to sort of get a refresher and to see something else and then come back to Albuquerque. Everyone always tells us to go to Santa Fe because allegedly it's gay, it has art, and um, free-flowing spirit free-flowing spirits. We're taking sort of a scenic route through the mountains to get there. It's only gonna be about an hour, um, but there's a lot of like galleries on the way. So this is the area of Albuquerque that all of the websites, all of online, um, everyone said don't go to. It's nicknamed the war zone. This is where allegedly the most crime in Albuquerque happens. And to be honest, it looks like any other part of Albuquerque. I mean, there's some industrial, there's a lot of commercial area. It does not seem unlike any other part of Albuquerque that we've seen. It looks very normal.
All right, so it's the next day. Yesterday we went to Santa Fe. We loved the downtown of Santa Fe. It was adorable. It was a good city center full of restaurants, livelihood, and what we really wanted out of Albuquerque, but Albuquerque doesn't have. The problem is all of the places that we really could afford to live in looked a lot like Albuquerque in the sense of big suburbs. Santa Fe had some really good uh, areas that we really could see ourselves living in, some really cute neighborhoods. The houses were good size, it was clean, they were friendly, but all of the parts that we were looking for would be so far out of our expense zone because we cannot do that expensive. Like thousands and thousands, thousands of, dollars of dollars for to rent these places. Like like a like a two bed one bath is like two thousand dollars a month. It's way, 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 way too much. Their minimum wage is fifteen dollars up there, fifteen dollars an hour, but that's not even close to what you would need to actually live up there. The reason that we're not a big fan of Albuquerque is basically outside of the city center, a lot of the areas are suburban. It's kind of exhausting, honestly, driving around all these suburbs and just no one walking around. It feels deserted, it feels desolate. And then downtown is also deserted and desolate, so it feels rather unsafe. There's not really a lot to do down there. A lot of things are closed. It's just big stretches of avenues and loud roads you can't really connect to, and it's so empty and desolate that it starts to feel unsafe. And so we've just sort of decided that the small areas that we could maybe see ourselves living in aren't worth sort of the trouble of the rest of the city. Uh, the next couple days are gonna be spending uh, mostly filling in blanks if we're missing anything about Albuquerque, um, any interesting facts, we're talking to people, people who can sort of help us understand the city more. And then we're also gonna be doing a bunch of more, more tourist-like things such damage as- Damage control. Damage mm -hmm. control, yeah. Such as uh, viewing nature and going around the nicer parts of the city, but at this point, I mean, we've just sort of seen that it's, this whole area is not going to be for us. We just came from a very local Albuquerque record store. I ended up finding a record that is like really rare. Like I got it for 20 bucks and that record is worth over a hundred. Um, and it was in awesome condition. And it's like, came from a genre that I have done a lot of research on and the records from are really rare. So that was really amazing. And the store owner knew a lot about Albuquerque music and culture and had been the here. Scene. Yeah, and I've been here for like, what do you say, like over 16 years? Well, he grew up here. He grew up here. I want to hear about different music scenes and how they exist in whatever cities we're going to. And that would, I got that from him, which was really lovely. And now we're going to a coffee shop downtown um, and a music venue, but also a bar called Sister. And an arcade. And an arcade, which apparently is very famous. So stay tuned.
So here's the thing. Lovely space, lovely area, lovely coffee. The thing is, again, where's the people? It is like, what, 5.30 p.m.? This place is so empty. A desert inside and out. Desert inside and out. Completely deserted and desolate. So one of the dumbest things to ever happen on a trip out west through the desert in summer happened. Um, our air conditioning stopped working. It just sort of stopped. We thought it would be much, much more expensive than it actually was. We thought it would be the, um, the compressor, the air compressor. I think that's what we thought it was, but we took it to the people and it was just the, the fluid, I don't know how cars work. We got it fixed, it was much faster and much cheaper than we thought it would be, and the air conditioning works just in time for us to drive to Phoenix tomorrow. Also altitude sickness, a real legitimate thing. The entirety of Albuquerque, I have been short of breath at best. I think I've gotten used to it a bit, but I've been so exhausted just from breathing, I cannot walk far. I find myself yawning a lot, taking a lot of deep breaths. Uh, Albuquerque is 5,000 feet elevation, and it was even harder when we went to Santa Fe, which is 7,000 feet elevation. <sighs> it was a, it's a real, actual issue. It's kind of crazy. I wonder if people are more healthy out here because they, it's just harder to breathe. Today we're here at the Sandia Peak, at the Sandia Tramway. So we are already uh, sort of high up, but um, we have to go up this mountain behind us. Up the Sandia Tramway, all the way to the top of the mountains.
Yes, as you would expect, it's cooler up here. Yes, as you would expect, it is quieter up here. And yes, as you would expect, it is hard to breathe.